Why does God give all this detail? Well, let me just share a few things with you, and then I want to give you the blessing. If you add up those numbers, and again, you know, we don't have to fight about it, and I've read enough books this week. I mean, I read so many books about the, or last week, that there are godly people that I admire greatly that think that the numbers in the Bible mean nothing. And they think that they just stand for groups of people, and they don't think that they're literal generations, and they don't think the Bible is created in literal 24-hour days. Great. But you know what? They have to build themselves an entire new system. When you cannot believe this just for what it says, and you have to redefine everything else, where do you stop? That, I mean, that's just the problem. Once you start, it's like when I was little, my mom says, don't pull that thread. I wondered, why am I not supposed to pull that thread? So I started pulling it on my sweater. And all of a sudden, there was a hole. I put all the thread back. But the hole was still there because it was all interwoven links. You know, as soon as you start pulling the thread out, it just, it all comes loose. And that's what we find with the Bible. Now, why is this? It's because Methuselah, if you add up his numbers, would have died on the very year that the flood started. Why is that? Because Methuselah means that when he dies, it comes. That's what it means in Hebrew. And so God sent Methuselah to live the longest that any man lived on this planet. And the year he died, the flood came. Now you say, that's a coincidence. No, it's not. I think God just planned this whole thing. God let everybody on the planet know this guy. Boy, this guy's Methuselah. He's living on and on and on, you know. And here's this other man crazily building a boat. And all of a sudden, those two converge, and Methuselah croaks, and Noah floats away. And everybody drowns in between. Okay, what, what is the ark? And, and real quickly, I want to give you all this because I want you to have the joy of this to go home with. Number one, the ark was a wonderful picture of our salvation in Christ. The ark was planned by God. It wasn't invented by man. The way that, that mankind was saved was God's invention, not man's. That's what salvation is. Do you know, there's, there's two, two parallel tracks that are going through our world. One is religion. The other is God's revelation. Religion is man's invention on how to get to heaven. Revelation is God's revealed plan. You know what religion says? You can never do enough. Just keep trying and trying and trying. You know what God says? Jesus did it all. Don't try. He paid the price. One is the human achievement. I'm going to try and be as good as God wants me to be. The other is divine accomplishment. Jesus did it all, and I stand in him complete. God invented the ark. Man didn't. Secondly, there was only one way of salvation. There's only one door into the ark. Did you know there's only one way to Christ? There aren't many roads that lead to Christ. And God does not have many names, and the people that call him Krishna are going to be right at the same place as the people that call him Jehovah. No. Neither is there any other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. That's why he's so offensive. You heard Ted Kennedy say it, and I'm not talking about any politics. I'm just talking about Ted Kennedy. You know what he said? He said, you can believe whatever you want, but as soon as you get exclusive, I will not stand for it. See, nobody likes the offense of there being only one way to God. Nobody likes As long as we say we're one of many ways, we will peacefully coexist on this planet. But as soon as we say that Christ is the only way, people hate that. They don't like you to say that. The ark... There was the only way of salvation. There was only one door. The ark was made of wood. That's a picture of the humanity of Christ. He had to be born as a man in order to save us. The ark, look at verse 14 of chapter 6. This is neat. Verse 14, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms and cover it inside and out with pitch. You know what's interesting? The Hebrew word for pitch is the word for kafar, for atonement. You know what it says? Get an ark of wood and atone it. Cover it. Just, just coat it with pitch. What's interesting is that that's the whole Old Testament. All those blood sacrifices that they offered never got rid of sin. They just washed, or they just covered them over. They, they atoned, they covered them. They were still there until Christ came and bore them away, but they were covered. The ark is a picture of our salvation because Jesus Christ took our covered sins and bore them away. God invited Noah and his family into the ark. Look at chapter 7 and verse 2 of Genesis. And it says, you shall take with you seven animals and, and a clean and male and female. And uh, verse 1, come into the ark and bring all the animals with you. See the invitation of God in those first two verses? God invited them into the ark. And once they were in, look at verse 16. And it says, so those who entered were male and female 
And they went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut them in. You see, God invited them into the ark, and God secured them. Did you know if you're truly born again that God invited you into Christ, and God shuts the door so you won't lose it? Boy, there's a lot of people that don't know that. They think that's the arrogant thing to say. No, that's what the Bible says. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve the invitation or the shut door so we don't lose it. We don't deserve either one. But the ark is such a beautiful picture of salvation, of our security, because God invites us to Christ and God seals us and holds us in Christ. The ark not only saved mankind, but the creatures within, just as Christ's death will not only deliver us from the bondage of sin, but creation will be delivered from the bondage of sin. If you're an animal lover and if you're a nature lover, and and I just came back from nature and I love it too, Praise the Lord, all of creation is going to be delivered from the bondage of sin. Right now, this universe is groaning. There's a dissonance and there's a there's a uh, just an out-of-jointedness in our universe as, as entropy and as all of the universe is winding down and it's just, it's just decaying. It's groaning. But God's going to deliver it from that groaning. Christ not only came to save us, he came to set the universe free from the bondage of sin. The ark saved them from judgment. Christ saves us from the wrath to come. 1 Peter 3, uh, verses 18 to 22, which I want to read to you, connects Christ to the flood. And let me read to you what it says. I keep alluding to Peter because he talks about the ark so much. For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh. We're not saved by being baptized and having our sins washed away, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Christ who has gone into heaven is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. You see, people that believe in baptismal regeneration have the wrong idea. Do you know why? All the people on the planet that got baptized by the flood died. It's the people that didn't get into the flood that stayed alive. So all those people that believe that baptism saves you, they're outside the ark. Because it wasn't the water that saved them. It was the ark that saved them from the water. And it's not the water that saves us. It's Christ that we are in, and he is the ark. And the water just portrays the fact that we have identified with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Well, the ark saved them from judgment like Christ does. 